Hey drivers, thanks for stopping by the shop. Today we're gonna to be doing a little bit of work on Dweezil's brakes. The brakes work okay, but the pedal is not as firm as I think it should be. We can help that a little bit with adjusting the brakes just as regular maintenance, but once those shoes are in contact with the drum, things should get really solid, and I just don't think we're quite there yet. I believe the solution to this is to bleed the brakes. Maybe there's a little bit of air in a line somewhere, and we'll get that to work its way through. On top of that, even though the car hasn't seen a gazillion miles, the fluid's been in there for a little while, and I think it's due for a flush. This brake fluid stuff is hygroscopic, and that means that it absorbs moisture. So the humidity in the air gets in there because our caps are vented to the atmosphere, and eventually, in an extreme case, that can rust out the lines from the inside very dangerous. <laughs> so we're going to take care of two problems here by bleeding the brakes. The big problem that I have with bleeding brakes is that it's just me. I run kind of a one-man show here and let's face it that when you do have a helper to push on the pedal for you they're not always as into it as you might need them to be. <laughs> so the solution for me is to use a power bleeder. About eight years ago, I picked this thing up. This isn't a sponsored deal. This is just a tool that I really like that served me well. And I'm going to show you how we use it on an air-cooled VW today and why it's the best option as far as power bleeders or implements or whatever is concerned. As you can see, mine has some miles on it, but it has held up well. I did consider going the garden sprayer route and adapting all of this myself, but I don't know. It's nice having one that's the right size and it has the little meter on it that's helpful to us. I think it was a good purchase and it's probably paid for itself by now. For our cars, we're gonna need an adapter. I use the little snap-in reservoir on my master cylinder and it uses a 45 millimeter cap, I think it is. Let's see, this is a 45 millimeter cap. Same thing that you find on the split bus. In fact, the last time that I used this was on the bus. If we've got the original one for our Beetles or we have a late bus, it's the smaller 27 millimeter cap. Let's make sure of that also. So different size adapter for these smaller caps on our VWs. I've linked all of this in the description below. That does help me out with the, the whole affiliate link thing. So uh, if you wanna support the channel, not a bad way to do it. We're gonna attach this thing to the master cylinder cap. We'll fill it pretty full of brake fluid and then pressurize it and that simulates pushing on the pedal. It's not exactly the same, but it's really close and it's a whole lot better than a vacuum bleeder. We can't use vacuum bleeders on our VWs. I'm sure someone's tried it and felt like they got good results and that's great, but let's take a closer look here to really understand it. So let me pop this off of here. That's just the plunger and there it is. There's the seal. Notice the way that it was oriented, right? It was like this. And if we look at the shape of it, some people call this a chevron seal. To see how it's kind of open, pointing backwards towards the pressure. See, a lot of its sealing properties comes from the fact that these sides here get pushed out. They expand out against the wall of the cylinder when there's pressure on this side, right? If we have a vacuum bleeder, then we're actually causing a vacuum from here, which is very likely to suck air in past this so-called Chevron style seal. It doesn't have a lot of sealing properties when it's a vacuum going that way. It does a whole lot better when there's pressure going this way, like what happens when we're pushing on the pedal. We're gonna acknowledge that in our method here and use a power bleeder for these brakes. Now our first step here before we hook up the bleeder is to push the shoes all the way out against the drum. So I'm gonna go around all four wheels and adjust the brakes so that they're pretty much locked up. There's a slight drag on the brakes as it is and that's, that's how we want it when they're properly adjusted. But I wanna push it out further than that so that there's no slack between the face of the shoes and the friction surface of the drum. This is always one of those brain teasers here, like which way do you turn the things, right? So to tighten down here, I'm gonna go this direction and then come down here and go that direction. We're definitely better. 
do one more here and here. So that's comforting to know that at least this wheel was adjusted pretty close to as good as it can get. And now it's in good shape for the brake bleeding process. Same deal over here. I'm going to tighten the top one and down here, go backwards. Oh, and we're locked up, so we're in good shape. In case you're wondering about my brake adjuster, this is an old broken screwdriver that the handle had busted off of. Uh, I did a little bit of grinding on the tip there, but mainly just some bending, and it works really well for VW brakes and just gets thrown in the VW toolbox and goes with me. This doesn't look too good. I'm pretty sure that's transaxle fluid, and I don't like seeing so much of it. This is the weep hole here. We may have to investigate that separately. For our purposes, though, we're here to tighten up these adjusters. So I went a couple of clicks there and a couple of clicks here. Great. Okay. Let's do the other side. This side gives you a better look at the weep hole in action there. Thankfully, not as big of a mess over here, but definitely see some fluid coming out. So we'll just keep an eye on it couple of clicks okay we're all set normally on this car the reservoir would be up here in the trunk sitting here but you can see that I don't have that I chose to eliminate this reservoir and the two lines that go through here and down below in favor of a much simpler version that you can see back there it just has this clip-on reservoir very much like the split bus right there on top of the master cylinder but as you can see access is a little bit of an issue so to be able to get closer to it i'm going to go ahead and pull off the left front wheel this should be a little better so before we fill the bleeder up, I need to get this cap onto that reservoir, which shouldn't be too tough. Um, there's no swivel on this arrangement. Some of them have a quick release, I think, but mine doesn't. And so what I usually do is put a few twists in this line before I start threading it on, and that's plenty. These things don't thread down a million times or anything. But that'll make sure that our line is relatively straight without a lot of fuss when we're ready to start bleeding. This thing was filthy. You want to wipe all of that off first. We want to make sure we don't get any crud down into the reservoir. Nice. Just making sure the line looks nice and comfortable there. All the way out to the dealy do here. Now we can go ahead and put a ton of brake fluid in here, at least a quart, because I do intend to flush the lines and then we'll pressurize the tank. I'm gonna go ahead and pump this thing up. We're gonna go up to 15 PSI, which is about halfway up that dial. And as we bleed the brakes, we're gonna come back and check this. Now I put two quarts of fluid in this thing, so I didn't have to pump very much. It just kind of depends on how much air is in there, how long you have to, to pump to get the pressure you're looking for. As I did that, fluid was pushed up through this line and into the reservoir. So now that reservoir is pressurized. That's a little different than normal, right? That reservoir is usually at atmospheric pressure and is vented through its cap, but as long as everything's in good shape, we should get to this point without any leaks. Now you may notice that there's some air bubbles in the line feeding the reservoir. That's okay. That's not going down into the brake system itself. Once those air bubbles work their way into the reservoir, they'll hang out in the top of it while the fluid drops to the bottom and that's what's being pushed down into the brake system. So we're good there. We're back here at the right rear wheel because it's the furthest away. This will take the longest to bleed. Take off my handy little cap. Because I have these on there, this stays nice and clean, which I don't know. It's a nice to have at the very least. So this is a good start. Few air bubbles there, but clean fluid. Oh, I'm making a mess. OK, 
Okay, watching closely here. And of course, we want to keep in mind the bleeder is running out of pressure as we go through this. I mean, it lasts a while, but as long as this is open, that pressure is dropping. And even more importantly, we want to keep an eye on the fluid level because if we push air through our system, we're going to have to push it all the way through our system. Ooh, a little bit more air. That's going to be some of that squishiness we were feeling. So thankfully, this fluid is clear. It really should be because the whole system is new. But it probably has a little bit of moisture in it just because it's not totally fresh. And what's pushing it out is perfectly fresh brake fluid that's not only clean but lacks any moisture. That's why we do this every few years on our VWs to keep those metal lines rust free. Progress report so we've pushed this much fluid into the system at this point. There's a little bit of fluid leaking, which is typical. And as we speak, it is eating away at my paint. I don't know how the show car guys do it. I just let it happen. <laughs> I don't like it, and I clean it off right away, but this is part of it. A quick check on our bleeder shows that we have dropped down to five PSI. Got plenty of fluid, but I'm gonna go ahead and pump this back up. On especially this first wheel, I like to get as much fluid into the jar as I think exists in the system between here and the master cylinder. The idea is to replace all of it, right? And if I go a little bit past that, that's okay too. One thing about flushing the system is it takes a little bit of the pressure off, no pun intended, of making sure that you get all the air out, right? If you're just trying to get the air out, then you're only gonna do this long enough to accomplish that, and it's a kind of a guessing game. You don't really know where the air is, so in my mind, you might as well just flush the whole thing anyway, because that's what it would take to really know that you got all the air out. This looks a little bit more clear than when it started. If that's true, then I think we've gone far enough. That means we've got new fluid that's come from the front to the back. That seems like a pretty good amount right there. So let's just stop here and move on to the next wheel. Not a bad way to clean that grease off too. Left rear is next. Things really start moving now. Now really the only fluid that we should need to replace at this point is what comes from the end of the long line from the front to the back. So just from that T to this point, which is just a few feet. So we shouldn't have to do this for very long here. If we're gonna find any air bubbles, we should find them quick. We're a little below 10. Might as well go ahead and top it up. Not seeing any bubbles. Gonna go ahead and call it and we'll move to the right front. Saw a couple small bubbles, but nothing too crazy. If this doesn't fix my problem, I'll still be in better shape knowing that it was completed. Really haven't seen a smoking gun, but probably doesn't take much to make a difference. So this will be interesting to see how the brakes feel once we've buttoned it all back up again. This is not all of the fluid that we ran through the system. I probably poured out about this much along the way. So we've definitely gotten a good flush out of this. While I'm down here, I can see that my ball joint boots did not last. Now for the bleeder, we want to depressurize it first. I'm just going to crack it here. Those air bubbles we saw running into this thing earlier are really helping us out in this case because it left us a little bit of space at the top of the reservoir. to say it folks but the brakes feel the same as they did before the good news is that we didn't make them any worse and the power bleeder accomplished getting fresh fluid into the system so we know there's no bubbles and there's fresh fluid so we got something done but we're gonna keep at it because I want the brakes to be as good as they can be one thing that I try to remember is that 
I don't have any idea what a VW drove like off the factory floor, right? Brand new, can you imagine, right? Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about, but I can only imagine what a VW drove like when it was brand new. And I imagine it was better than what I was feeling with my brakes tonight. So I'm gonna keep working towards it and I'll take you along with me for the ride. This power bleeder will come in handy because we'll need to bleed the system again. So more of this <laughs> coming up soon. Until then, you can see that I'm dumping out all of the, yeah, every little bit here, of the clean brake fluid, the stuff that was in here, right? Uh, and we'll save that for the next time. Also want to rinse everything out with some denatured alcohol to make sure that we dissolve that brake fluid. Thanks everybody for joining me on this step of the process. There'll be more to come. Everybody have a great day in your garage and I'll see you in the next video.